Now we're going to install the top end of this engine and we're going to start by installing some sensors. This is the crankshaft sensor. Now the one that was on the engine was in good shape so I'm just going to reuse it after I clean it of course. And you want to make sure you inspect the o-ring and if it's in good shape like this one you can just apply some engine oil and slide it right in. And then we'll torque these bolts to 18 foot-pounds. And we'll do the same thing with the camshaft position sensor. Again, making sure to inspect the O-ring and adding a little bit of oil before we install it. And this one also gets torqued to 18 foot-pounds. So now we're going to clean out the holes for the head bolts using a thread chaser. And you don't want to use a tap because you don't want to cut new threads because that will throw your torque settings off. And ARP actually makes a thread chaser specifically for these holes and it's well worth the investment to get accurate torque settings, especially on a boosted application where you're adding a lot of pressure to your cylinders. So to help clean out these holes, I'm actually just going to spray some mineral spirits down in there. You should be able to thread this in there just by hand or you can use a quarter inch square socket. Again, these aren't cutting new threads, it's just cleaning out the threads that are in there. And there is a little bit of gunk on there. It's not too bad. So good job machine shop. Once again, we'll wipe this down every time we use it so we don't contaminate the next hole. None of them were really that bad, so my machine shop did a pretty good job at cleaning this thing. So now it's time to move on to the lifters. I bought these lifters on Amazon from a place called Overstock Direct. And these are made by the same union that makes them for GM. And I went with the LS7 lifters because these are a much better design than the LS1 lifters. And they also came with the lifter trays. After you clean these lifter trays and wipe down the lifters, then you can install them in the trays. You can only go one of two directions, either this way or this way. So it's really hard to screw it up. It doesn't matter which way it goes, just so long as the flat spot is on the flat spot. So what we're going to do first is put a little bit of oil in here and install the lifters into the trays, and then we'll install the whole thing into the block. Now we'll go ahead and sauce up the sides and the rollers of each one of these lifters. So when we put them in there, they'll slide into the lifter bores easily. And these get torqued down to 89 to 106 inch pounds right there. All right, I got all the lifters and trays in there and reapplied some oil to the cylinder walls just to make sure those stay lubricated and they don't rust because this will be sitting for a little while after I get done building it. I also went ahead and installed these head locator pins, dowel things. Those are super easy to install. You just tap them in with a hammer until they stop going in. Now we're going to install the head gaskets and the heads. And the head gaskets we're going to use are Felpro part number 26191. These are an MLS gasket, and since I had my pistons bored over 20 thousandths, I had to order the correct head gaskets to match that bore. And these are reversible, so there's not a driver's side or passenger side, but there is a little stamp that says front. You just got to make sure that one goes towards the front, obviously. Since I'm running boost, I went ahead and splurged on some ARP head bolts. And these are part number 134-3609. These are for blocks that are 2003 and older. If your block is 2004 or newer, they have a different part number because your M11 bolts are all the same size. You want to make sure that you clean these really well because again, got to have a sterile environment. These ARP washers have the chamfered side and a flat side. According to the instructions, you want to make sure the chamfered side goes towards the bolt head. And then it does say to apply the ARP lube on the threads and the bottom of the bolt head. According to the instructions, they want the mating surface of the washer and the head to be dry. So you want to be really careful not to get lubricant on there. Hand tighten them for now. Remember the ones that are shorter go in the number 9 and number 10 spots which are here on either end of the cylinder head. Okay, these are all hand tight and now ARP has a special torquing sequence. So what we're going to do is tighten all of these bigger M11 bolts. First pass will be 25 foot-pounds, second pass will be 50 foot-pounds, and then the third pass is going to be 75 foot-pounds.
Okay, then the second pass will be 50 foot-pounds. And the final pass, 75 foot-pounds. And then these intake bolts up here will get tightened down to 25 foot-pounds. There we go, all torqued down. So now we'll just repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, our heads are on, they're torqued down. It's actually starting to look like an engine again. Here's a little pro tip for you. Make sure you mask off these intake ports so nothing will fall down inside of there because if it does, you'll be pulling your heads back off again. So the first thing we need to do is get these lifters to actually seat to the cam. Because right now, remember, they're still up in those lifter trays. So we're gonna temporarily install our rocker arms and the old original push rods. So now we wanna rotate the engine over a few times and we wanna watch for our rockers to make sure that these are all moving. That'll tell us that our lifters are on the cam. So now we can install our valve train, push rods, rockers, all that stuff. I did a separate video on how to check your push rod length on these motors and I'll put a link to it up here. But we determined that the 7.4 inch push rod, which is the stock length, is gonna work for my setup here. So now there's a debate. Do you go with hardened push rods or will the stock push rods work? Well, from all the research I've done, generally the consensus is if you are running a high performance motor and you're racing all the time and you're constantly at 6,000 RPM or above, you definitely want the hardened push rods. But if you're just daily driving, cruising around, maybe doing a burnout and maybe smoking a couple fools on the drag strip, the stock push rods are gonna be just fine for you. And the push rods that came out of this motor were actually in pretty decent shape. There was one push rod that kind of had the eyeball effect on it. And I looked at the rocker too, and sure enough, the rocker had a little bit of damage to it. And that's almost enough to scare me into buying the hardened push rods right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it forward on the engine so it's easier to get to. And I just, I'm just gonna run these for right now and save up for the hardened push rods. And eventually I will do that, but I got other things to buy like a transmission, got to do some steering stuff you know just general things to make the car actually move and then I'll cross that bridge when I get there so to install these push rods it's very similar to the process you use when you check your push rod length the rocker you're installing has to be on the base circle of the cam and the base circle is the opposite side of where the lobe is so all we got to do to make sure we're on the base circle on the intake side is rotate the engine until the exhaust valve lifts and then when it just starts to go down, we know we're at the top of that lobe and now we're on the base circle on the intake side. And to do the exhaust, it's just the exact opposite. You wanna go until the intakes open all the way and then when it just starts to go down again, you know you're on the base circle for the exhaust side. Since this is final assembly, we'll install some assembly lube, both balls on the push rod, as well as the valve and the rocker. We're just hand tightening these for now so we can spin the motor over. So now we'll rotate the engine until the exhaust port goes all the way up and then starts to go back down. And it stopped right there. Now it's starting to go back down. So now we know we're on the base circle for the intake side. Make sure that lifter's all the way down. 22 foot pounds right there. Now we'll rotate the engine again to get the intake valve to go open and then just start to close. Then we'll know we're on the base circle for the exhaust side and we can torque that one down. So we'll just repeat that process for all the other ones and we'll be good to go. Now we can install our valve covers. First, we're gonna clean down the valve covers and the mating surface on these heads. And we're also gonna put new gaskets on the valve covers. These are Felpro, part number VS50504. These get torqued to 106 inch pounds. It's also worth noting that the valve cover with the oil filler on it goes on the passenger side. 
All right, now we can install the valley cover. And as you recall from when I pulled this motor apart, the gaskets that went down in here where the knock sensors go got tore up. So I got this gasket set from Velpro that includes these gaskets for the valley cover. And this is part number MS92465. So we'll install these gaskets first and then we'll plop it down on there. So we're gonna wipe a little bit of oil on these just to kind of help them go in there a little bit easier. And what I discovered is our cam sprocket is just about the right size to help tap those down. And we'll just get our dead blow, kind of tap them on there. Bada bang. So I put bolts kind of in the corner to hold the gasket in place. And I'm gonna wipe just a little bit of oil on the inside of these seals right here just to help them go down over the sensor things. And now these will get torqued to 18 foot pounds. Now we'll install our knock sensors. This is one of those might as well while you're in there kind of items because this is a pain in the butt to do this because you got to pull the whole top end of your engine off. I went with the genuine AC Delco ones just because of bad reviews that the knockoff Chinese ones get. For my particular engine, this is part number 2133521. There's no need to apply a Loctite or anything to these. You just kind of gently lower them down. And these will get torqued to 15 foot-pounds. And now we'll install the wiring harness for this too. And I got a new one, again, same reason. And mostly because these rubber things are what goes bad on here, and then these leak and then it shorts out your sensors. So not so much the wiring as it is the rubber grommets. But first we'll attach the wires to the sensors. Make sure the wiring runs to the back of the engine and these will just clip on the sensors. So on these rubber grommets, just to kind of help them seal and stay sealed, I'm gonna put some of this Optimum Gray on there. Just like that. So as I've mentioned, a major problem and a design flaw in these early LS motors is the location of these knock sensors. Since the intake sits above that valley pan, over time these rubber gaskets kind of wear out and water and debris can find its way down in there and it'll short out your knock sensors. So I saw a guy on YouTube that actually had a trick to kind of fix that. He made a little dam right in front of each of these knock sensors to hopefully divert more of the water and moisture and debris away from that valley where those knock sensors sit down in there. So I'm gonna do the same thing, hoping that this will actually fix that design flaw. I mean, I'm no brain surgeon, but I think that might actually work. Now we'll install our oil pressure sensor and you want to make sure you still have this sealing ring on it. You also want to imply some kind of Teflon sealant. I got this stuff from Permatex. It's high temperature thread sealant. Just apply a little bit to the threads and then thread it on there. It's cam position sensor is in the way. So just remove that and we may have enough access. Okay, 15 foot pounds. Click. So now we'll install this steam vent crossover. Make sure you inspect the gasket that the O-ring is still sealing properly. If it's not, then you'll need to replace it. And these get torqued to 106 inch-pounds. Same thing on the block-offs on the back. These also get torqued to 106 inch-pounds. Got this brand new coolant temp sensor because the other one broke. It has what looks like Loctite on there. It could be sealer. Either way, you just want to make sure that this little sealer washer is on there. And I'm actually going to apply some of that Permatex thread sealant anyway, just because I don't want this to leak. You don't really want to use Teflon tape on this because if you get it into your engine, this will block up your coolant passageways and then you got all kinds of internal problems. And this is a 19 millimeter deep socket and it gets torqued to 15 foot pounds. And there we go, long block complete. Now I am gonna use the truck intake for now. I'm gonna do some injector work, but that's all gonna have to wait for the next episode. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit up the social medias down here, get yourself a t-shirt from the link over here, and I'll see you on the next one.